Hoarding disorder affects twice the number of Americans that suffer from OCD, so it is pervasive. But when does being a collector or having a cluttered home become full-on hoarding? In this session, Dr. Jenny Epp breaks down the basics of the disorder. She even shares the surprising behaviors you may not know are signs of hoarding. Dr. Epp, thanks for being back with us. Of course, thank you for having me. What exactly is hoarding disorder? Well, hoarding disorder is someone who has a lot of difficulty discarding items because for whatever reason they're attached to it or because they feel like they need to save it. Um, and it just builds up in the house to the point where it's filled and you can't use the space for what they're intended for. And is this related to OCD? Well, it's under the category of OC spectrum disorders. So in the DSM-5, it's an OC-related disorder. But is it, so then it is a separate disorder? It's a complete separate okay. disorder. It's related, but not quite the same. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit in more detail in later episodes about the differences between OCD and hoarding disorder, but mm -hmm. what are what is a big differentiation between the two? Well, one of the big differentiation is that and I'm going to use psychobabble term now, um, hoarding tends to be more egocentric, which means that they don't see anything wrong with collecting their possessions. Whereas people with OCD don't gain any satisfaction mm -hmm. from having OCD. In fact, it causes a lot of distress and the intrusive thoughts that they have. It's like I said last time, it's mm -hmm. like having nightmares mm -hmm. that keep replaying in your mind. So who the hell wants to have nightmares, right? So the people with a hoarding disorder uh, don't recognize that there's a problem, don't yes. feel like their life is negatively impacted, exactly. and likely aren't looking for any help. Most of them, that is true. Usually it's family members who are encouraging them to get treatment. Are there different types of hoarding disorders? There are. There are um, different things that people hoard. Mm. So for example, some of the more common things are uh, clothes, um, shoes, um, and then there's also informational hoarding. So this could be anything from books to newspapers to mail, um, especially now with um, in the digital age, people are hoarding a lot of things from the internet. So, you know, you collect and you save things into your bookmarks because you feel like you might read the information later on when you have more time. And how often does that really occur? <laughs> uh, first of all, never, because I'm that person. I go, I'm gonna sit down and read that article and then I never do. Right. So, but it's an actual hoarding disorder of digital information mm -hmm. because yes. it's negatively impacting their lives. It's negatively impacting their lives because number one, they accumulate so much material that it's hard to organize. Number two, it interferes with their daily functioning. So for example, a person who is hoarding could be sitting in front of the computer 24 seven collecting information at the expense of social interactions, family times, hobbies. Got it, that makes sense. So when does it differentiate between someone who collects, right? Because I, when you said someone who captures or collects information online, right. everybody, every Pinterest guru out there gasped and thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> do I have a hoarding disorder? So when is it you're just active on Pinterest and I have a hoarding disorder? Well, again, a collector, so I'm, let, let's take the information digital hoarder out of the picture for a moment. Okay. There's a difference between a collector who is collecting items for the sake of its value versus a person who's just collecting items that we may not see as having value. So things like paper wrappers, old food that's been expired for months, um, free, th free items. They might be going to places and anything that's free, brochures, handouts, pamphlets, they might be collecting them and holding on to them. Pens, pencils, anything that we might associate that value to, 
A person who truly hoards would just collect them, accumulate them, and then things build, and there's no more space for what you're supposed to be using it for. So, for example, this table, it's nice and cleared right now. We can put two cups on it. However, in the hoarder's home, this table will be filled with things, and you wouldn't be able to put two cups on it.、Mm -hmm. In fact, not only would this table be filled, eventually the whole house would be consumed with things.、Mm -hmm. Right? Now, a person who truly collects, let's say, antiques. They're collecting the items, and not only are they collecting the items, the items have similar categories, right? So if I'm collecting, I don't know,、um, animal heads, I don't even know if that's the right yeah, term for right, them, but、yeah. animal heads. Okay, well, I would have specific places for them, and they would be showcased. And I might have a thousand animal heads in here. However. They'll be categorized. They'll be organized. They'll be placed in a nice fashion to be displayed. Whereas that would not be the case for a true hoarder. The difficulty in categorizing, organizing, having places for specific items is practically non-existent for a true hoarder. And the animal head collector is. Does not have their life negatively impacted from their collection. Exactly.、Yeah. Exactly. What、uh, age can hoarding manifest? Well, the most typical period that we start seeing the symptoms is around the teenage period. So、mm. anywhere between ten and thirteen years old. Um, however, it can start very early on. So we've seen people who. Hoard kids who hoard items that they have sentimental value to, even as young as three. So,、mm -hmm. for example, if you have a favorite toy truck and it's broken, the wheels are falling off and it, it, it's it's cracked, and that item would usually be tossed into the trash. However, this kid may not be able to because of the sentimental value, the attachment the child has to this toy. And we start seeing this type of behavior in younger kids. So it can start very early on. The behaviors can start very early on. It's not considered hoarding at that age yet, or hoarding disorder,、mm -hmm. because it's not really negatively impacting a child's life. Parents do a great job, or they can do a great job in limiting how much stuff a child keeps around and helping a child to clean out the clutter. However, it start becoming a disorder in the twenties and thirties when okay now the collection is really visible and the clutter is really visible and it's really interfering with the way that you live. You can't safely live in a home for what it's for,、um, and then when you get to age forty and fifty, that's when it becomes really severe if there's been no intervention. Previous to that, do you ever see somebody who lived in their twenties and thirties and forties with no hoarding, and then turned fifty-five and just became a hoarder? That's really rare.、Mm. That is really rare because, again,、um, hoarding—it's the behaviors that starts, and the couple of problems, or a couple of there are a couple of core vulnerabilities with a person who hoards, and that is that they have difficulty. Discarding items, right? That's number one.、Mm -hmm. um, however, there's also a cognitive vulnerability, so they're not able to make decisions very quickly and easily. They have difficulties problem solving. They have difficulties coming up with with categories and、uh, information processing. So all of those vulnerabilities you start seeing early on. However, again, it takes time to accumulate things,、mm -hmm. right? So if I can explain it in a different way, it's kind of like when you first move into a new house, and let's say you just graduated、um, from college, you're moving out of your dorm, and you're moving into your first apartment. Well, your apartment is empty. At that point, right,、mm -hmm. and then over time you start bringing things into the house, and then let's say you run out of space. So then, what is it that most people do at this point? They get 
storage space,、mm. right? And then they start accumulating things into the storage space. And then over time, let's say you move into a house, and now your house has a garage, and you start putting things into your garage. Now, what is it that garages are used for? Cars. Cars.、Mm -hmm. How many of us use our garages for cars? Not many. I、right? hear that. I always thought I go. We put worthless junk、mm -hmm. in our garage,、mm -hmm. and then we have really expensive、yes. items that we leave outside. Exactly.、Yeah. Exactly. So take that example, multiply it by a hundred,、mm -hmm. and that's what it's like. Because not only is your garage no longer used for cars. Your microwave is no longer used for. I mean, I've seen you know sh the microwave being used for shoes、wow. and、uh, tubs being used for books、mm -hmm. and items being placed on top of toilets. So the toilets are no longer being used for defecating and urinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow.、Mm -hmm. Are there certain demographics that are normally affected? There doesn't seem to be any difference in gender, race, socioeconomic status. So, no hoarding doesn't discriminate. Yeah, like all the other mental health disorders. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, the only reason I asked that question though is because I thought maybe you would find people with more access to finances to have more hoarding because they can just get more stuff.、Sure. But like you mentioned earlier. A lot of this hoarding is free stuff or wrappers. It, it doesn't have to be something with monetary、exactly. value. Exactly. It's it's not it's not you know like compulsive shopping. It's、yes. not like that. Yeah. Yeah.、Um, it's more of if it's free or if it's on sale,、mm -hmm. then I need to collect it because I'm going to need it sometime later. Except that sometime later, you could be collecting things on sale for the next ten years,、mm -hmm. and are you still going to use that item? I mean, how many of us have items in our medicine cabinets or in our、um, uh, pantry、mm -hmm. that we didn't even remember they existed? Yeah, you go to the store、right? and buy it,、exactly. only to find out six months later you already have exactly, it. Yes, exactly. Yes.、Yeah. Exactly. Are there common co-occurring disorders that come with hoarding? Well, about research、um, indicates that about seventy percent of hoarders also have a comorbid diagnosis.、Um, the three most common ones are social phobia,、mm. depression, and generalized anxiety disorder.、Mm -hmm. And about you know, strangely, about only twenty percent has true OCD. Explain that last part. What do you mean, twenty percent? Twenty percent of hoarders、uh -huh. actually have a co-occurring OCD diagnosis. Got it. Got it. Considering that it's a OCD-related disorder, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that only twenty percent has also OCD,、mm -hmm. that goes to show how different hoarding and OCD actually is. Yeah, really good point. I'm glad you brought that up. What is not considered hoarding disorder? What is not considered hoarding? So, as we spoke earlier, a person who collects items—that's not considered hoarding.、Uh -huh. um, let's say you just moved and you have clutter all over your house—that's、uh -huh. not really considered hoarding, right?、Uh -huh. Because hoarding is a pervasive. Disease, so it's not just occurring in one moment in time.、Yeah. Let's say you have a lot of a lot of. Let's say you just had children, like I do. Yeah. And now your house is filled with all sorts of different toys、yeah. and baby gadgets.、Um, that's not considered hoarding. Right. That's just excessive clutter for a period, finite period in time. Yeah. I'll ask you a personal question. You have been very open with your OCD diagnosis,、mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people really responded well to that because you are the the OCD expert and you have the personal background. Have you ever found yourself doing any of the behaviors related to hoarding? I myself have not. Okay. However, I do have family members who、um, do have hoarding disorder,、mm. And not, it, I mean, it's impacted the entire nuclear family because you know, I mean, it's it's hard for family members to live in a space where there are specific rules as to what items can be touched, what items are off limit, what parts of the house is off limit. 
um, you know, that can be really challenging for family members. Do they recognize they have hoarding disorder? Does the sufferer recognize it? Does the person with the, does, does the person hoarding recognize that they have a problem? Most of the time, no. No. Most of the time, no. Okay. Because again, it's egocentric. Right. Meaning that it fits with their values. It fits with their um, belief system. It fits with what they feel is okay. So when you go to your family member mm -hmm. and you are <laughs> the expert on this mm -hmm. and you go, hey, I think there's an issue here. Right. I think we could make your life better. Yeah. Their response is, there's nothing wrong here. Yes, wow. that's usually the case. Because if you told me, if any of the med circle doctors told me mm -hmm. like, hey, you should look <laughs> into this, I would really think about it. Sure, you know? sure. Except again, I think to admit that there's a problem means that I would need to change that problem. I, yeah, you are right. And changing that problem means I would need to discard or do something with all of this stuff, which is going to create a lot of anxiety oh, and distress because yeah. number one, can you, okay, think about this. If you were moving, can you imagine the distress and having to pack all of your stuff? Yeah, I just did it two months ago. It's the and worst. It, it is, isn't yeah. it? And when you're packing all of your stuff, the intensity of the thinking and decision making that goes into it, what do you keep, what do you toss, and where are you going to box things so that when the chaos is over, you can find the things mm -hmm. that you need mm -hmm. immediately. These are cognitive difficulties that a person with hoarding has. So to admit that I have a problem means I need to go through this process mm -hmm. and the, the process is just too daunting. Mm -hmm. So I would prefer to keep that away and no, I don't see this as a problem. What's, what's the problem? Yeah. All right. Makes sense. Well, in our next episode, we're going to talk about what causes hoarding disorder and some of the risk factors associated with it. 